South Mano is their lifeblood. It's one of the purest rivers, uh, unspoiled rivers left in Texas. Yeah, perfect. You can't catch these in an ugly place. They just live in the most beautiful places in the world, certainly in Texas. The river can help this little town, and it's a beautiful little town. I think there's more and more recognition in this state that water is becoming a scarce resource. The people are coming to the Lano, and so you need to be able to educate people on the right way to take care of it so that we can all enjoy it. This dry wash you see here is the site of Lano Spring and where it used to flow into the blue hole on the Lano. <coughs> the ongoing drought has taken a toll on the spring. Enough water for the dog anyway. But on the east bank of the river, the springs are still flowing, and the Vandivers take that as a good sign of the land management practices they've used over the years. Extensive cedar clearing, prescribed burns, oh, 130 or so header dams, grazing practices. Even with the severity of the drought we've been dealing with, I'm absolutely sure that we're in better condition than we would have been if we hadn't done these stewardship practices. And that's the message behind the South Lana Watershed Alliance, comprised of landowners like the Vandivers and stakeholders from numerous organizations. The alliance is dedicated to preserving and enhancing the river and adjoining watersheds by encouraging land and water stewardship through collaboration, education, and community participation. It's a heck of a lot cheaper to keep a watershed and a river flowing before it goes bad than to try to fix it after it deteriorates. Holding workshops for landowners along the Lano and opening a new paddling trail are two of the major educational tools for the Alliance. The paddling trails seem to be a good way to publicize how long the trip was going to take and what type of equipment was needed and to also guard the property rights of the landowners along the river. Property that's for sale along the river is now advertised in the paper as being on the paddling trails like that's a benefit and a plus. Today, a group of experts float the Lano to take note of where the river needs help. There's just not enough native grasses allowed to grow to the height and density that they should be to hold overland flow back. It looks like red leaf lettuce underwater. <laughs> and to marvel at the wonders the river has to offer. Yeah, this is called Spring Run Whitehead, and this plant is globally rare and only known from four counties in Texas and Coahuila, Mexico. We're about to go through our study site. You'll see the little flags up on the bank. I hope that the Alliance can have a strong grassroots initiative in the community. I think that they have a great partnership and a great network with a lot of the locals. But I think one of their, their proudest moments is with the Oasis wildfire that we had. In April 2011, a lightning strike burned nearly 10,000 acres of riparian and upland habitat along the Llano River. So the concern from this fire was what was going to happen to this land after it, how it could recover, if it could recover. The answer was a demonstration workshop put on by the Alliance for more than 80 landowners affected by the wildfire. They were shown man-made exclosures and natural exclosures to protect new growth from browsing cedar slashed terracing and fiber rows to stop erosion, even fiber blankets laid down in rows from special seed mix developed for scorched land. We've lost a lot of soil up here, up to two to three inches on these steep slopes. But what we are seeing is vegetation coming back from the roots and from seeds. So the good news of all this is that the land is starting to recover. We realize that part of our tourism dollars here it's not just hunting anymore, it's all the other things that you can do in a beautiful country like this. Paddling and fishing. The fishing in this river is great. A lot of people come here to catch the, the Guadalupe bass. And this is one of the only rivers in Texas where you can actually see all four species of kingfisher. There are land where it meets the river. So much life goes on there. You have your nesting birds, you have your tadpole, baby fish, big grasses filtering runoff from the land. Good stewardship equals good habitat, which equals good water resources. And water resources are good not only for a piece of land like ours, but they're good for everybody in the state of Texas. Getting one neighbor to talk to another neighbor on how to have a healthy riparian habitat is going to be your greatest chance of success. They're very unique in that they are the only one alliance of this sort. And with cooperation comes hope. It was a, a beautiful, pristine hill country spring. and. 
uh, was the pride of this ranch, and we can't help but believe that it'll come back.